Hi, I'm Patrick Bear with Sidon Group, and I've been working on RPG code for a long time. Now, when I got started, SEU was the editor of choice, really the only choice. But as of version 6.1 of the operating system, way back in 2008, IBM has stopped making updates to SEU. So as RPG, the language has continued to evolve and get better with new built-in functions and fully free format code, SEU has not. Essentially, SEU has been dead for over 15 years. So what options do we have? Well, there's My Workplace and RDI, which are built on Eclipse. But in this video, I want to talk about Code for IBM I, which is an extension for VS Code or Visual Studio Code. And it's going to allow us to use a modern editor to work on our code on IBM I, even if it's in source physical files. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to install VS Code and Code for IBM I how to connect to a server, and how to edit and compile source files. So let's head over to the browser and download VS Code. So here, I'm just going to search for VS Code Download, and it will likely be the first or second option that comes back up. The URL is code.visualstudio.com slash download. Just be aware that Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code are two different products. Pick the installer of your choice, and once this is done, I will click on the EXE installer. Now, the defaults are going to be fine. You have to accept the agreement. The defaults are okay. I like to add these defaults here, the select additional tasks, add open with code to the Windows Explorer. This now in Windows, when I have a file or directory, I can right click and open it immediately with VS Code. Other than those two, I leave the defaults. And it doesn't take terribly long for this to install. It takes just a, you know less than a minute. Although it, when you're watching a video, it seems a little bit longer, but it really isn't too bad. And then once this is done installing, it'll give us the option to launch VS Code, which is what we want to do. We're going to jump right in and get this going. So there it is. It's installed and we want to launch Visual Studio Code. Now here in VS Code, all right, close these things out. Um, they do have a file menu up at the top, but most of the time you're going to be spending using these icons on the left hand side. This is called your activity bar. And what we're going to start with is this one right here, this building blocks icon, which is the extensions. And in the extensions, we want to search the marketplace for IBM I development pack. And what this is going to be is a, a bundle of extensions that we can use for editing code on the IBM I. So we'll go ahead and install that. And once this gets installed into VS Code, what you're going to see over in the activity bar, I now have an icon for IBM I. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Now up here, there's help and support, so it, a link directly to the documentation. If you have an issue with VS Code, you can use this report an issue button to put information into the GitHub issue that can really be helpful for the developers. We'll caution you to read through the issue before you post it and make sure there isn't any personal or private information in there that you don't want made public in GitHub. Right? Once you've connected to servers, the list will show up here. But since we haven't connected before, the only option we have is this big blue button to connect to an IBM I. Here you enter a connection name. This is anything that makes sense to you. The host or IP address of the IBM I. It's going to use SSH to make the connection and to communicate. So you need to specify the port number that SSH is running on. The default is 22, although your IBM I may not be running on port 22. So check on that. And then your username and password for the IBM I. You can save the password if you don't want to have to type it in every time. And if you're using client certificates, you can enter the private key in here as well. So go ahead and fill out this information and save save and exit or connect and I will do the same make my connection and I will be right back so I've gone ahead and entered in my connection information 
and every can you can have multiple connections so if perhaps you have a development lpar and a production lpar or you're you know, working with multiple clients you can have multiple connections in here all at the same time and whichever one you want to connect to you just simply click on that name now, once it makes is, is establishing this connection, it's going to go through and do some housekeeping and administrative tasks. Um, if you don't have a home directory, it will ask you if you want to create one. It, you know, it, the debug server may ask if you want to store the password here. This is the debug extension wanting to save my password. So I'm going to allow that. And here it's asking me if I want to start an SQL job, I will say yes. And now we are connected to the IBMI. Now here is the library list. This would be whatever library list you get when you sign into a green screen based on your user profile and job description and those things. You can add a library to the library list if you want. You can rearrange your library list, move them up and down. You can change your current library. I'm going to right click and remove that from the library list and make that my current library. It's important that you set the library list correctly because your compile commands or any command commands that, that run on the server are going to use this library list. So it's important that you get your library list set correctly. We also have an IFS browser where you can look at uh, files in the IFS. But really what we're interested in here is this object browser. And I'm going to create a new filter and I'm going to name this filter Patrick's RPG source. And you can use simple or regex for these um, options here. I'm going to just keep it simple. I'm going to specify the library of pbear. You can specify an asterisk for uh, wildcard all uh, files, but I just want to look at QRPG LE source. This is the object type for source files. You can specify members, member type. If it's a library or source file that you don't want to accidentally make changes in, you can check this to make it read only. I'm going to go ahead and save those settings. And now I have a filter for my RPG source. So if I open this up, there's my RPG LE source file. And in here is all of the source code that I have. I'm going to work on this test program here. And now to minimize this IL, uh, this uh, window on the left, you can click the icon and that will toggle it, or you can use the control B shortcut. So here is my RPG source. This is the source in the source physical file changed again in VS code. I'm going to save that with control S or file save. It's in here somewhere. File save. This is saving the source in my library in QRPG LE source. Now, when I'm ready to compile this, I have a couple of choices. Back in the object browser, I can right click on the file name and run action. You see there's also a shortcut here for control E. So over here in the source, if I press control E, I get a list of options that are available to RPG programs. Here I'm going to select the create RPG program and run that. And I have successfully compiled my RPG program into my library on the IBM I. So I think that that is pretty cool. Okay, so there's one more thing I wanted to talk about, and that is Code for I Fridays. Now, Code for I Fridays is a free side and group community event. Every other Friday or so, we get together and talk about Code for IBM I. So if you're new and you're wanting to know how to get started, or if you're using Code for I and you're running into trouble, or you just like to talk about Code for IBM I, maybe you want to meet Liam, uh, hop on to Sidon Group and fill out the little form so you can get emailed an invitation to our Code for I Fridays. And that is about all we have for this video. We talked about installing VS Code and Code for IBM I. We connected to a server and we edited and compiled some RPG source. So happy coding and hopefully I will see you on Code for I Friday.